In his main defender, Sandeep Shingen is out of football for the next six months. God save us. Hi, I'm Ankur Sharma. You're watching Super Football, the home of Indian football fans. Welcome to Half Folly, where we hit the Indian football news as soon as it bounces off the ground. Let's get straight into VR, aka very Artist Review of the Week. Indian football and Kerala Blasters defender Sandeep Shingen is set to miss six to nine months of football. This happened after he sustained an ACL injury in his left knee and as you guys know ACL injuries can be well, they can be very very scary and they have put off Sandeep Singh for the next well 9 months if he recovers well maybe that duration is going to be less but one thing's for sure he's mostly going to miss the whole Indian Super League season for Kerala Blasters and also the FIFA World Cup qualifiers the next four or five FIFA World Cup qualifiers not only the one against Bangladesh that is terrible terrible news Now, if you guys do not know, this injury happened in India's practice game versus North East United. I thought it was a great decision to prepare for the Bangladesh qualifier against a club side in India. Something that I want to see more of. But the whole thing got overshadowed by this big headline: Sandeep Singh's injury, and fairly so, right? Because Sandeep Singh is the main defender for the Indian national team and also for Kerala Blasters. Now, Kerala Blasters is set for a season where the fans' expectations are so high that they are all expecting to probably win the ISL, not just qualify for the top four. And for the Indian football team, I just cannot see any replacement. I don't know who's going to replace Sandeep Singhin because Arvind Gehlot, he is young. Anwar Ali has not been given a look in into the national team. Anas Erathodika has not played under Eagles team ads. And then there's Adil Khan, and he's the only person who is kind of in the ilk of Sandeep Singhin, but not really, is he? Sandeep Singhin, I believe, is head and shoulders above the rest in the national team. Kerala Blasters might still be able to replace him with a foreign signing, but overall, it's a major, major blow. to both Kerala Blasters and the Indian football team so i'm going to divert a question to both Indian football team and Kerala Blasters fans who do you think can replace Sandeep Singh and i honestly cannot think of a name the ali ganas national clubs have been invited to Kuala Lumpur for a meeting with AFC and AIFF on october 14 to make the final decision on the indian club football road map the day is finally here and this time around i feel that we will have a solution uh the clubs are free to accept or reject whatever comes out of this but of course the final decision will lie in afc's hands so maybe they can always force it upon the clubs but i think this is going to be an open discussion where the clubs can also propose uh, their ideas and they are also free to reject what aif have said to them but i think out of this meeting we'll finally get the road map maybe it's going to be imposed on clubs i hope it's not i do not wish to see an ugly outcome out of this because i do kind of expect i legal and asl clubs to work together because in some ways they do want to work together and it's been an issue between leagues and not between clubs as such so yeah let's hope it happens i personally am hoping that starting next season this one is obviously way way set october 20 is when i asl start november 16 is when i league starts so this one is pretty set for the next one i'm hoping asl and i league will be one league and maybe just call it indian super league it doesn't need to be called any football league but i'm open to hearing your thoughts about the renaming of the league do you think it should be called the indian football league or should everything just fall under the indian super league uh, umbrella should i call it after the turmoil of emotions for bengaluru fc fans there's finally some good news bengaluru fc is set to play their home games in bangalore in kantirava this season this comes after weeks before this bengaluru fc had enlisted Balewadi Stadium in Pune as their home stadium for the upcoming season and everyone sort of lost their mind especially Bengaluru FC fans and I couldn't frankly believe it because given JSW's position in the Indian sports fraternity I always thought they had the financial muscle and also the right networking to pull the strings to make it happen and well it has happened they have to pay 78 lakh rupees in in terms of fees that they have to pay uh, to occupy the stadium but I don't think that's a big sum for for a company like JSW at all of course it is a big sum but i think it's going to be worth it because they have such a wonderful fan base here and nobody really wanted to see an indian football club being forced out of the city to play in another city just because some petty issues could not be solved so i'm glad that this has happened as good to see bengaluru fc play in bangalore because this is where they belong now let's move to social hate map where to discuss your comments made on spf this one is from akshay Lenny for CDM position. If someone has questions, please go through his last season statistics. He deserves a chance. Now, Shay, I absolutely agree with you. I think Lenny had a wonderful season last time around with FC Goa. He is a top quality player. He has had some issues when he was in Bengaluru FC, but uh, he has proved again that he's a quality player. And last season, well, he was fantastic, wasn't he? And kind of deserved to be in the national team. I think what's going to happen now is. everything's going to rely on the indian super league season not only for lenny rodriguez but other players like jobby justin michael sairaj 
Sereton Fernandez, you know, all of these players that we happen to like a lot, but Igor Stimac has clearly not seen enough of, or even if he's, he has seen them, he's probably seen the highlight reels of them, or maybe seen them in small national team camps where they clearly haven't been able to impress him. So, I'm hoping that these guys take their Indian Super League season seriously, a lot more seriously than they have in the past, because this time around, Ego Stimac will be keeping an eye out for more players. And of course, then coming back to Lenny Rodriguez, Amarjeet is injured right now and there is a spot that's opening up in the national team which he can occupy. So, sooner that, that he does it, the better. Indian Football Ultra says, India Under-16 team still has almost one year until AFC Under-16 Championship starts. So, this team should be busy in exposure tours to Europe and Asia. We all know how exposure tours have helped this team so that we can get the semi-final spot and qualify for the FIFA Under-17 World Cup by merit. In Football Ultras, I absolutely agree with you. I think the Under-16 team is, is a bunch that really excites me. You just don't know where they're going to end up. They, they are a bunch full of a lot of potential and the sky's the limit, really. I think Exposure Tours, like you said, has done wonders for these guys. I think AIFF has pulled off a master stroke. They have, they have invested in these age group teams, which I think is the right thing to do because we clearly are producing a better brand of players now because of these exposure tools. So I think more of them, the better. And of course, with the Under-17 World Cup, well, I do think it's going to be really, really steep uh, to make it happen. But I think this team has all the potential in the world and these exposure tools, uh, you know, the, the right amount of exposure against the right teams is just going to prepare them for the AFC Under-16 Championship. And maybe if you end up in semi-finals, you never know. Now let's move to Suda Pandit Tweti, the Indian football post that impressed us the most. This one is from Adidev Guru. Jingen's injury shouldn't concern India much. The next game is all about frontmen and they need to click productively. Scoring one goal is the bare minimum requirement, but scoring the next is more important against Bangladesh. I think Adidev here is absolutely right. I think Bangladesh is a team that we have to take the game against. And there has been a lot of intent that has been put out by Eagles to match in his press con comments as well that he wants to attack for the whole 90 minutes and he thinks that India is going to go on all-out attack against them. And it's true, uh, defence is not going to be as important as attack in this game. I think the biggest problem that I've seen for the Indian football team is that we score one goal and we become a little content and I want to see that change this time around. I want to see us go for the second goal and maybe even the third goal because Kolkata is a, is, is a place where I think they could have an unforgettable experience if they deliver a memorable win because honestly, that stadium is going to be packed. We all know it. If any football team manages to score two, three, four goals, the crowd will remember it for a really long time and he goes to match. Might probably go down in a legend as well. Chaku Philip Jacob says, Gokul and Kerala and Real Kashmir have had great results against ISL teams in pre-season. Hope the AC took notice that there isn't much to separate in the two leagues on the pitch and proposes a suitable roadmap on October 14. I think Chaku here is absolutely spot on. I think I League clubs do not get the right amount of attention in pre-season in general as well, but the kind of results that they've been pulling off are attention worthy. Gokul and Kerala especially is a club that well, has made top signings. They have they signed Bruno Pelasari, ex Chennai player. They have had a great coach as well. They have Marcus Joseph up front as well, who I believe could win the Golden Boot as well and could really challenge Pedro Manzi for it. So, things are looking great. I think on the football pitch, clubs like Chennai City FC and Gokulam Kerala are more than capable of challenging the ISL clubs. And I think that point is going to be made when they end up in Kuala Lumpur on October 14. It's good that the clubs have been invited. It's good that the representation is going to be there because I-League needs their voices when they meet the AFC. I think overall, the AFF is kind of more in favour of ISL in the I-League, even though they wouldn't want to say it. But it's kind of true, isn't it? They will favour the ISL. So the I-League kind of needs to speak for itself. And I'm glad that they will have that opportunity. So guys, that's it for this episode of Half Holly. I hope you enjoyed it. Apologies about last week. It's the first Half Holly episode we've missed so far. And it was because I was really, really sick. I hope you forgive me for it. Till next time, I'm Abhinan Krishnama. You're watching Super Bowl, the home of any football fans. I'll see you in the next video.